One of the headlines that we had for our conference this year is AI, artificial intelligence, folks. It's here. What are we going to do with it? How do we work it into our marketing? What are the warning signs? What are the positive signs? And we're so pleased to have with us a gentleman whose agency right now is at the forefront of working with corporations to understand and utilize uh, AI. And that's our friend uh, Al Barasa, who's founder of in Insights and Strategies for, for um, Preference Analytics. And he's headquartered in San Mateo, California. Al was with us last year, and um, we asked him to come back. He's also one of our award winners. So we're going to bring Al right up here now because we have a – are we ready to go, by the way, Rico? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to bring him up. We, we can all catch this uh, very important presentation. Al Barasa. Uh First of all, thank you, Rick, for having uh, given me the opportunity to be here today. Uh, it's a pleasure. I, I wanted to start by saying I had three takeaways from the presentations and the panel discussion, which were really important to me. Uh, Rico, uh, my takeaway was know your audience, behavior, and language. Um, from um, the kernel, the decision-making process, um, you need to know what's happening in the marketplace. And from the panel, I got a bunch of things. Don't be afraid to ask questions, get feedback. Um, you need to know your market as well. And what that meant to me is um, that knowledge, it's all about knowledge and knowledge is power. And so what we've done to, um, what we've built is essentially a knowledge ma management platform which we've called Latino Link. Um, we're calling it the wisdom of a thousand minds for reaching the Latino market. Uh, and the, the idea here is to leverage artificial intelligence, generative AI, to develop highly focused and effective insight-based multicultural strategies. So let me kind of take you through uh, the discussion topics over the next 40 roughly minutes. I'm going to go quickly over artificial intelligence cover different forms of artificial intelligence, specifically generative AI. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Latino Link, which, as I said, is a knowledge management platform to help engage and understand the Latino market. And we'll follow that up with a, a quick demo. Um, I think we just got a quick bio on our firm. We are a B2C, B2B insights firm with about 40 years of a uh, specialty in the general market and a specialty in the U.S. Hispanic market. Um, formerly a director of research at Allstate, Intuit, and PayPal in Silicon Valley. Uh, we do work for companies like AAA, Cash App, Chicago Cubs, Meridian, and, and a bunch of firms. A lot of heavy work in the financial services area. We blend qualitative research, which means focus groups, in-depth interviews, surveys, uh, choice analysis, um, and we blend that together with knowledge management, which is what I'm going to be speaking about today. Um, so what is AI, right? And I thought, what a, what's the best way to kind of talk about AI? And I thought, let's go to IBM. You know, IBM's been around for a long time. So I created this little avatar to provide some um, explanation, a definition of how they see artificial intelligence. Hola, soy Isabella. I am a new IBM employee. Please let me provide you with IBM's definition the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, OEAI, yes technology that enables computers or machines to simulate human intelligence and problem-solving capabilities. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Isabella. You know, um, I created her using a form of AI. And what, what the definition of, AI, of IBM's definition of AI is that we're approaching a period where machines or technology or computers can simulate human problem-solving capabilities. I just want to make sure we're not there yet. It's still the Wild West. But we're moving in that direction. And so to, to Ray's point a few minutes ago, um, you know, the market is being disrupted. The country's being disrupted. Technology is coming, and so we really do need to be prepared. 
So there's various forms of artificial intelligence. I'm going to kind of walk through these. I'm going to focus on the far left uh, section here. We're going to talk about rules-based systems, machine learning, deep learning, and generative models. On the right side, we have forms of AI that are coming, but they're not here yet. Those are general, uh, strong AI where we have machines and robots that can actually reason as well as humans. And then we have um, artificial intelligence that's going to supersede human intelligence. We are so far away from that that I really encourage you to not be worried about AI taking your jobs away or changing society immediately. But let me go through the let me go through these forms of artificial intelligence. This is essentially rules-based systems that have been around for a very long time. If you think about decisions, if-then conditions, it's straightforward logic where the decisions are based and made on explicit rules. Some examples, TurboTax, right? If-then, then you f fill out your, your uh, tax form. Google Maps, antivirus software, smart home devices. Rules-based systems, those have existed for a long time. Machine learning, these are algorithms that learn from the data. A system that really imp learns over time and learns what your, pers what your desires are, what your behaviors are. Some good examples include Netflix recommendation systems. I'm sure you've all seen these. It's learning over time what you like or what you don't like. Amazon's product recommendations is a great example. Spotify and predictive analytics. And I'm going to do a little bit deep dive on predictive analytics because it's a form of artificial intelligence. And I, I think it's important that we talk about that and not lose sight, lose sight of it uh, as we move into the Gen AI world. In the deep learning area, these are really more complex, a network of interconnected nodes. In other words, there's a step up in the complexity to process information. So if you think about some examples here, think about Google Photos image recognition. It's got the ability to actually recognize faces and people and all this. It's an amazing step up in technology. Tesla's autopilot, level six driving behaviors. Google Translate, if you ever use these abroad, it's a, really an amazing tool. I live in, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, Waymo is a, a driverless system cars. Um, and if you've ever been in one of these, it's an amazing example of deep learning. You get into these cars and they, within 30 seconds, you do not even realize you're, driving, you're in, a, in a driverless vehicle. They drive as well as many humans in San Francisco. It, <laughs> or better. And then generative models. So this is gonna be the focus of our conversation here. Generative models, you've all heard of these, ChatGPT, for example. Um, it's got the ability to create new content based on training the data. So that's really unlike the internet, right? In the internet, you're there, you ask a question, and it, and it spits out whatever was already there. Here we're talking about the ability to create, to synthesize data, to generate new data based on the question that you ask uh, uh, ChatGPT. Some examples include open, AI's DALI uh, situ uh, solution, ChatGPT 3 and 4, uh, OpenAI just released their new model a couple of days ago. I have not even tried it myself. There's other solutions such as DeepFace Lab, Deep Dream Generator by Google, and IBM Watson. IBM Watson is a solution that's been around for quite a few years. They're very heavy into the fashion design industry, into the sports industry. If you follow sports, um, IBM Watson is, is uh, at the forefront of that area. Um, just a couple of comments. These images that were on here, um, I, I created them using OpenAI's uh, DALI solution. I have absolutely no experience in graphics at all. Um, yet I was able to create these images, and they kind of represented what I wanted to, to communicate here. And it, and it took me you know, 20 minutes to create each of these. Uh, we would have had to spend thousands of dollars to create these images if we were going outside. And here we're using a free solution, essentially a free solution, uh, to create graphics that were just not possible a few years ago. Um, just one more comment before I, I continue. Um, 
I think I mentioned a few minutes ago, it's really important to recognize that we still are in the Wild West uh, when it comes to generative artificial intelligence. Things are changing every single day. Um, so what you see today will be different tomorrow. And you know, I just mentioned that OpenAI just came out with their new solution. It's, it's dynamic. It's, it's, but don't get caught up in the hype. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to do a deep dive on predictive analytics. Predictive analytics is a form of machine, machine learning. It's been around for 30, 40 years. Um, and the reason I bring this up, because I think there's a great deal of value uh, to anybody who, uh, who needs to understand or predict the future or predict future outcomes. Um, so what is predictive analytics? It's the ability to forecast future outcomes based on using historical data, statistical modeling, machine learning, um, and, and data mining. So what you're trying to predict using what, ha what has happened in the past to predict the future. So here's an example. This is a study that uh, we did for travelers of Florida, gosh, 15 years ago. And the idea was, how do we decrease the defection of auto insurance customers? How do we, how do we identify likely renewers or likely defectors? So what, what we do here, and it's a form of machine learning, it's a form of artificial intelligence, is we built a predictive analytical model using a form of regression, a statistical technique that examined what is the impact, the simultaneous impact of different things on the defection of a customer. And if you look at that chart on the right side, you don't need to get into the details, it basically says these are the things above that line that impact positively retention and the things below that line that impact defection. And we're able to build a, set, a tool that says, here's your customers, here's who's gonna defect, here's who's gonna renew, and then once you have that model and you validate that model, then you're able to apply that model to your whole customer base, your whole database, and say, here's the customers I'm gonna focus my, focus my retention strategies on going forward. Um, these, these tools can be used in a variety of different areas. Um, you can predict uh, what's a good lead, what's a bad lead, right? Lead prioritization, you can use it to predict ter uh, termination of employees, uh, who's going to pay me back? So payment behavior. Um, which segments of the market are you going after? So which, which segments are my, be my best uh, candidates? So a variety of different ways to apply um, predictive analytics. Strongly, strongly recommend that you consider that in addition to generative AI. Um, so I started fooling around with artificial intelligence about a year ago now. And I thought one of the most interesting experiments was to uh, ask each of the main AI solutions out there to define themselves. How do you define artificial intelligence? I'm not going to read all four of these, but I thought it's interesting that OpenAI, Gemini, which is from Google, Claude, and Perplexity, I asked each of those solutions to define themselves. And if you skim those definitions that they provided themselves, they're similar, but they're not identical. And the point of this slide is to say, like I mentioned earlier, things are changing. Even the systems themselves can't, they're not consistent. The parameters are not consistent across uh, different solutions. So keep that in mind as, as, um, as you start thinking about Gen AI. Let me ask a question. How many people have used ChatGPT here? About half the room? Great. All right, so uh, we've uh, built a solution called Latino Link. Um, we feel it's a way to amplify the voice of consumers uh, using artificial intelligence. Um, and let me kind of go through this. If you think about it, it's very similar to ChatGPT. Um, why did we build this? Um, we became fascinated with the idea of generative AI. Uh, as I said, we've been working with this for about a year. And we said, we think there's a way to actually increase our own efficiency and our own agency. Um, so we, we were looking for a way to increase work efficiency. And we realized there's a, a, a potential to assist in crafting insight-driven multicultural marketing strategies. There's a lot of information out there. How do we use that information in an effective way to help uh, clients um, drive, build marketing strategies. 
So what is it? What is Latino Link? It combines 80 years of experience in the U.S. Hispanic market. We can ac access and distill information very quickly. It leverages internal and external proprietary data. It's fueled by not only the data, but subject matter expertise, people who have been out there actually implementing marketing strategies, multicultural strategies. Um, and we feel it embodies innovation. So why would somebody want to use this? We're using this internally, but why would you use this? We want to be able to unlock the power of cultural understanding to boost engagement. Be more effective. Increase the ROI when you're engaging with multicultural markets. We want to be able to maximize the reach with culturally relevant targeting campaigns. I think the, both all of the speakers talked about the, this morning, know your audience, be culturally sensitive. That's, those are the benefits of using a solution like this. And anybody can build these solutions, by the way. You can build your own solutions for your own industry. So where are we in this stage? Um, we believe that uh, a solution like this that we have built, that you can build for your own organization. Um, we're going to evolve as artificial intelligence evolves. Today, we're kind of in the beta test. We're at the groundbreaking knowledge database platform. Um, as, as time evolves, we want to add additional layers of information and integrate new insights and expansion of the knowledge. And eventually, we want to evolve this platform into a self-service platform uh, based on broad and deep knowledge. And I'll go into the details of this in a minute. Let me kind of go through what's in Latino Link. Um, there's seven domains of knowledge. Um, we have dynamics of the Hispanic market, and I'll go into the details of each of these. Cultural values, which we've all spoken about this morning. Industry insights, subpopulations of the Hispanic market, other particular markets, geographic insights, leadership and talent management. I think Ray was referencing this a few minutes ago. Uh, and strategic best practices and processes. So for example, what's in, our, in the dynamics of the Hispanic market? Market trends, market size, market growth, economic power, age, all the market dynamics, understanding the market. Cultural values, um, we talked a little bit about this today. I think Ray Saleo was here last year speaking about understanding different cultural, the cultural dimensions. Uh, there's proprietary cultural knowledge. So we're bringing all of this stuff into one place. Industry insights, we happen to have some deep insights in several uh, categories, auto insurance, life insurance, home ownership, beverages, and so on. Subpopulations, um, deep dives on Latinas, Millennials, subgroups of the Hispanic market, Puerto Ricans, Mexican Americans, Chileans, Argentinians, and so forth. Uh, geographic insights. So we feel like it's important to build domains around geography. So we've actually started to build some domains around what is the Hispanic market like in Minnesota? Where are the Latinos in Minnesota located? So we're able to answer those kinds of questions. I, in previous conversations today, we talked about an understanding who, when you're recruiting, you need to have talent, right? And you need to understand how to deal with those individuals. So domains or information around emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence, recruiting multicultural talent, talent best practices, recruiting millennials. And last, and last but not least, strategic best practices and processes. So what I mean by that are what are the key business drivers and learnings that we've gained over 40 years in the business? Right? What's an integrated market model that works when, reaching the, when trying to reach the Latino market? What are some strategic models? What do, here's an example. How is an organization effective uh, in reaching the market? How do I align my brand right, with the cultural values of the Hispanic market? And then applying learnings from different organizations, like the military, which has a broad knowledge base around different cultures. Here's, so again, kind of just to restate where we are today. Um, right now, the, our, as I said, we're in beta mode. We are uh, us, utilizing this to um, provide advice to clients. Um, we access the Latino link. 
we filter the knowledge and we provide the advice to clients across these different domains. That's where we are today. In the future, uh, the idea is to add additional layers of information. For example, what kinds of advertising works? What's most effective? What's most effective at a local level? What's most effective in, in the Minnesota market? You need to understand your market. Um, social media insights. There's a wealth of information that we want to be able to bring in because that the market's changing. We talked about millennials this morning and how that's changing. Having access to, to social media insights and leveraging that information in a, in a, in a real-time um, manner is, is really, really, can be really powerful for anybody. And then proprietary research. So if, if we're conducting research with Hispanics, we bring that information in. It's brand new information that can be leveraged uh, to build your, your marketing practices. Uh, and the end state, and this might be five years down the road, um, the idea is to develop a series of artificial intelligence agents that actually deliver advice across different functions. Um, so these could be AI agents that deliver advice around human resource practices. It could be advice that prov they provide advice around advertising, around research. Um, and we feel like this is going to be uh, and we've been talking to a lot of folks in Silicon Valley and different parts of the country where this is kind of where the future is going. Um, it's that the agencies, some of these agencies will build out their own systems that provide advice and they'll be so self-service systems. It's, it's a long ways away, but that's kind of where uh, the market's going. And in fact, we were in a conversation uh, with a, uh, a group of folks uh, a couple of months ago, and we were talking about, um, and I'm going to blank out on the name of the uh, uh, media mogul. He was going to build a, uh, an, a studio in Atlanta. Um, I think it was like an $18 million investment, and decided not to build it because they could do most of the things from an, from an AI perspective. So that kind of tells you a little bit about you know, people who really have the wherewithal to build these things that they're really seriously considering artificial intelligence systems. Um, anyway, that's kind of our, uh, our North Star, if you will. Um, uh, kind of why would somebody use Latino Link or any kind of knowledge management platform? Um, you want to gain an edge over your competition, right? Um, and you want to receive advice. You want to have that insight from people who've been in the marketplace, who know who, who have been experienced the, the, the wins and the losses uh, over time. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch over and do a quick demo of Latino Link so you can get a flavor for what I'm talking about. Um, let's see if this technology works. I'm actually going to uh, access Latino Link uh, using my phone. And this is sitting on ChatGPT. I'm going to start with uh, a question that you might want to ask uh, a knowledge management system about the Hispanic market. And that question is going to be, tell me about the cultural values of the Hispanic market. Please tell me about the Hispanic cultural values. Hispanic cultural values are deeply rooted in family, community, and respect. Family plays a central role, often extending beyond the nuclear family to include grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. This emphasis on family is also seen in the prevalence of multi-generational households. Community involvement and support are highly valued, and there is a strong sense of collectivism where the needs of the group often take precedence over individual desires. Respect, particularly for elders and authority figures, is another key value. This cultural orientation affects behavior in various contexts, from business interactions to personal relationships. Additionally, many Hispanics maintain a connection to their heritage and traditions, often seen in language use, with a significant number speaking Spanish at home, even if they are proficient in English. These values influence consumer behavior. Great. I, I'm using the, the audio mode here so you can, you can hear it, but in, in all of these ChatGPT solutions, you can actually get a, 
obviously you can read it, you can print it out. So that's an example. Um, I, th I think what I'd like to do is ask the audience to ask some potential questions of ChatGPT and see if it, uh, see if it can answer your questions. Anybody want to volunteer? Yes, Colonel. Oh, that's a good question. We'll see if it can do that. Yeah. How do Hispanic values align with military values? Hispanic cultural values and military values share several important commonalities, particularly around the themes of family, respect, duty, and community. Firstly, both cultures emphasize the importance of family. In Hispanic culture, family is central, extending beyond the immediate family to include extended relatives and close friends, reflecting a strong support network. Similarly, the military often fosters a familial environment among service members, promoting camaraderie and mutual support. Secondly, respect is a foundational value in both cultures. Hispanic culture places a high importance on respect for elders and authority figures, which aligns well with the military's hierarchical structure and the respect for rank and command. Additionally, duty and responsibility are paramount in both Hispanic and military values. In Hispanic culture, Individuals often feel a strong sense of duty towards their family and community. Similar to the military's emphasis on duty, honor, and service to the country. Lastly, both cultures value community and collectivism. Hispanics often prioritize the needs and well-being of the group over individual desires. A principle that is also evident in the military, where teamwork and collective success are crucial. These So, uh, let, me, let me point out, I, you know, we built this solution using proprietary knowledge. We have, as I said, we have domains in here around, mili around the military, learning from the military. We have knowledge from uh, cultural values that Mr. Salea and others have. So we, what we've done here is built a solution that works within our proprietary database. We are purposely trying to avoid having the, our chat bot reach out to the internet. So the idea here is to have a proprietary knowledge database and not, what we want to avoid is hallucination, which I'm sure you've all heard that things, things get made up. The idea is, it's not a perfect solution, please don't walk away thinking we have a perfect solution, but it is the idea is to have a proprietary knowledge database. Yes? Uh, Yo, oh, sure. Ooh. Why do you have to know that? <laughs> <laughs> I, boy, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to answer that, but we can try. Well, I'm curious, the dictionary. I don't think we have that answer, but let's see what it says. How do they differ from, okay. How do Hispanic values differ from Hispanic, I'm sorry. <laughs> How do Hispanic values differ from military values? Military values generally encompass principles such as honor, duty, respect, selfless service, integrity, and personal courage. These values are often outlined in the military's core ethics and standards of conduct, fostering a sense of unity and purpose among service members. One, honor. This involves upholding ethical standards and maintaining a sense of pride in one's service and actions. Two, duty a commitment to fulfilling responsibilities and performing tasks to the best of one's ability, often putting the mission and the well-being of others above personal interests. Three, respect, valuing the dignity and worth of all individuals, regardless of rank or position, and fostering an environment of mutual respect and cooperation. Four, selfless service, prioritizing the welfare of the nation, the military, and fellow service members over personal gain, and demonstrating a commitment to serving others. Five, integrity, adhering to moral and ethical principles, being honest and truthful in all actions, and holding oneself accountable for one's behavior. Six, personal courage, facing fear, danger, or ad I don't think it's answering the question, right? 
how how do Latinos in general in the U.S. relate to healthcare initiatives? Who? Oh. Yeah. You can reward it, but that kind of idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Thank you for that. Uh, and it is all about the right prompt, and it's about asking the question properly, too, and it's kind of thinking through what is it that we want to learn. Uh, Rico, I don't think we have the – we're not going to be able to answer that one. I don't think I have enough detail in the knowledge database yet to answer that one. Let, let, me, ask it, let me ask it this question. Um, what do we know about the, the health care of Latinos in Minnesota? Tell me about the uh, health care of Latinos in Minnesota. Latinos in Minnesota face various challenges and disparities in health care. One significant issue is health insurance coverage, with about one in five Hispanic Minnesotans lacking health insurance as of 2021. This uninsured rate of 15.3% is more than three times the state's overall uninsured rate of 4.5%, indicating a considerable gap in coverage. Additionally, life expectancy for Hispanic Minnesotans is relatively high at 83.4 years, which is 2.5 years longer than the state average of 80.9 years. This places them second only to Asian Pacific Islanders within the state in terms of longevity. Moreover, around 9% of the Hispanic population in Minnesota, estimated to be about 30,500 individuals, live with disabilities. These disabilities include serious difficulties with hearing, vision, cognition, walking, self-care, and independent living. Overall, while Hispanic Minnesotans enjoy a relatively high life expectancy, significant challenges remain, particularly in the areas of health insurance coverage and disability support. Great. Um, I'll just do one, one more. Um, what can you tell me about Latinos' use of technology? Latinos are significant showing high engagement across various digital platforms. They have a strong presence in social media with 87% of Hispanic internet users owning smartphones, which is comparable to other ethnic groups like black and white internet users. Additionally, Hispanics heavily use apps like WhatsApp with a significantly higher penetration rate of 52% compared to 18% for black and 12% for white populations. Online behavior indicates that Hispanics are more likely to purchase products via mobile devices than desktops or laptops, highlighting a mobile-first approach to digital shopping. Moreover, Hispanics are also very active in social computing activities, such as blogging, posting reviews, and participating in social networks. Notable. Good. I just wanted to give you some examples of, of what is possible by building these kinds of chatbots uh, using the technology that's currently available. As I said, you can build these for your own industry, for your own organizations. Uh, it's not that complicated. It requires, a, it requires a good amount of time and dedication, um, but it is doable. So um, if you have any other questions, I'd be glad to take them offline after the, the, the presentation. So thank you very much. Yeah.